Hello everybody, today we've got another power supply. Here you can see the back side, its markings, some current parameters, 800 watts in total. Here is the connector, quite unusual decision, they put on each line capacitors probably because they wanted to make it like a advertisement move like super high stability low noise stuff like that the man who brought it to me said it it wasn't working it wasn't it didn't even start so we should try it anyway because sometimes People say it's not working, but when you try it, it is actually working. But under some circumstances, it is not. Okay, let's turn it on. Here we see the standby voltage is present, which is good, but it's not starting. You can hear probably relay is clicking, but it's not starting. Let's try this tester. Maybe it is gonna do the work, gonna start it. But no, relay clicks and nothing happens. So it's time to open it, see what's inside, try to fix it. Okay, remove the screws, let's open it. By the way, it's really clean, which is unusual. Probably the power supply is a new one. Maybe it's actually wasn't at work. Probably there is a faulty element somewhere, or maybe a bad joint by manufacturer. I don't know yet. So far we know that the standby voltage is present, the fuse is good, so the caps are charged and we should be really careful and not touch everything. Also I need to remove those screws and we'll proceed. So those back or side screws are removed. Now I gently lift it up and discharge capacitors. You should definitely always do this because at least it is unpleasant to be shocked by a charged capacitor and it can even be little, little. On this side we don't see anything obvious as well, nothing blown, clean as new. So it's time to test it more carefully with multimeter. I will not show you the process, but in a few words I will tell you. Okay. As a check routine, we should always at first check the dive bridge and the fats, which I did and found that on this, on this side, in the middle, there are two fats, which are dri drives, push back and forth, push pull, the main transformer, and one of them is shorted. So you cannot remove it just one fat. We've got to remove the whole plate, the whole radiator, pull it up and replace the fats. 
which I did, you can do it as always, just like moving back and forth, like so. Of course, I'm kidding. You cannot do that without desoldering the legs at first. You cannot see it, its marking, but I've checked it and it's 600 volts, 37 amps. Let's check one more time of board, whether it's shorted or not. And this one drains the sources. Okay, built-in diet we see, gate to source, also fine. And uh, the second one, and as you can see it's shorted, which was expected. Okay, now it's time to find replacement. You don't have to find the exact type, you can find the replacement by judging its current and voltage and of course it should be MOSFET, no IGBT or bipolar. So I found two similar MOSFETs and before placing them on the radiator I decided to put it like this and check it. As you can see now the power supply is starting, turn it on again, and it's working. All the voltages are lighting up, so now I'm gonna put new transistors on the radiator, put it back, and obviously it's time to test. Also you should test the small elements near FETs. Okay, everything is put back together. The main cord is on. Turn on the power supply. Standby voltages light up and it's working. It's working. Let's check with another tester. Sometimes it is useful to test with this because here we can see power good signal. Minus 12 volts. It was showing 13 volts but I think it's because there was no load, actual load. Sometimes it happened. For good stabilization of voltage, you should load it a little bit. But anyway, I think this one is fixed. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.